Hi everyone. It's so good to see you today. Um, my name is Kayla from the Camp Out Connecticut team and I'm so excited to be playing some trivia with you all today. Um, it has already so been a really today. fun week. Um, in the last couple weeks we've uh, had a great time on Facebook Live with doing some sing-alongs and some knot tying and some story reading and cabin chats and mad libs and um, today I'm looking forward to some trivia with you all and um, I'm looking to see if we have some friends joining in oh yeah hi Dennis hi Bree it's good to see you guys um, great so um, just we'll just give it another minute for everyone to get uh, get logged in if they're able to watch today. Um, it's a beautiful day outside, so sunny, and and um, I can't wait to maybe take a walk a little later. Um, but yeah, uh, hello everyone, hello, awesome. So um, I was thinking for our trivia game today, I've definitely been missing camp, and I think some of us out there have been missing camp too. Um, so I think that um, I was hoping as we as we do our trivia today, we can use our imaginations and imagine that we're taking a walk around camp and visiting the different program areas as we go. Um, just a few, some of my favorite ones. and. Um, the questions that I'm going to ask you will be inspired by some of those program areas. So when you hear a question, make sure that you write in the comments the answers. Um, and I want to let you know too that even if it's been a long time since you've been to camp or maybe you've never been to camp before, um, it's okay because I have a feeling you might know the answers to these questions as well. Um, and so make sure to write in those comments and um, there's going to be some bonus questions along the way for those of us who are very familiar with camp. Um, so I'm just so excited to get started and I think we'll get going. Um, awesome. So our first stop today is going to be in the Arts and Crafts building. We're just gonna start right there. Um, that might be my favorite spot at camp. It's hard to choose because there's so many amazing places at camp, but Arts and Crafts might be my favorite. And so I'm looking around on all the amazing art that so many friends have made over the years. Um, I see lots of paint and lots of duct tape and um, also those great uh, drawings all over the tables and the floors. I'm sure some of you might remember that. Um, but my question um, is about some famous art because I'm thinking about famous art maybe when I'm in arts and crafts. So I would like to know where can you find the famous painting of the Mona Lisa? Hmm. It's a tricky one. Tricky, tricky. Um, but I wonder if anyone knows where you can find the famous painting of the Mona Lisa. I'm going to wait and see if anyone can write in the comments. And it can be the country or it can be the name of the art museum. And as a hint, um, this is the largest art museum in the whole world. Um, so let's see. I'm, oh, hi, Mark. See some friends writing in. Um, I see a couple answers so far. Great. I do see one answer that's right. Oh, yeah, there we go. You're right, everybody out there. It's the Louvre. The Louvre is the right answer where you can find the Mona Lisa. Um, and the, the Louvre is in Paris, France. And um, if you wanted to check out Google after this, you could pull up a picture of the Louvre. It's really fantastic to look at. Um, one thing that is out in the front of the Louvre is this really large triangular dome um, that uh, the sun reflects off of it. And you can it's like big windows and you can actually like see kind of inside the museum from the outside. So it's really, really neat. Um, maybe you can get a chance to check out a picture of it later on. Um, good job with all your answers, everyone. Very cool. 
Um, and when we're in arts and crafts, I'm wondering what some of your favorite craft projects that you've ever made in arts and crafts might be, or some of your art projects you might be making at home these days. Um, for me, I really love making duct tape projects like wallets and flowers. I think flowers are my fave, um, but I love some painting and I really like screen printing too. That's always a favorite of mine at camp um, where you get to um, put a print onto a t-shirt. I had never done that before I went to camp. So um, that project always makes me think of camp. Um, yeah. Great. Um, so I think our visit to arts and crafts is over and it might be time to move on to our next one. So I'm going to walk on out the door into the beautiful sunshine and I'm going to head across the dining hall green and go into the sports and rec building. Um, I love the sports and rec building and it's so cool with the two levels in there where the top level is all those fun arcade games and the um, pool tables and then on the bottom level it's the big gym floor and of course the, the um, basketball hoops that I can see when I'm looking around in there and so the basketball hoops um, make me think of my next question for you all. Um, so the next question is, in a basketball game, what is the maximum number of players a team can have on the court at one time? Hmm, think it over, think it over. I'll say it one more time. In a basketball game, what is the maximum number of players a team can have on the court at one time? Hmm. I bet we have some basketball players out there watching. If you like to play basketball, can you give me some thumbs up and some hearts? <laughs> um, I really like to watch basketball. I bet there's some uh, fans of watching basketball out there too. Um, but uh, I camp is really close to Yukon, so there's a lot of Yukon basketball fans around <laughs> up here anyways. Um, so let's see. Oh, look at we have a couple of answers coming in. Yes, that's right. Good job, Sierra and Bree. Um, it's five. You're right. There's five. Uh, five is the maximum number of players that one team can have on the court at once. Um, so if you're playing a full game uh, with two teams, you could have 10 players. But you're right. Five is the answer. Good job, everyone. That was a tough one, too. Um, but about sports and rec, right before we head out of sports and rec, I was wondering if some of you have some favorite games that you may have played in sports and rec before, like the, the video games up on the top level. Uh, any favorite ones that you've that you've watched and played before? Some of you watching, some of you playing. Um, for me, I always really enjoy Pac-Man and Dig Dug and Space Invaders. Those are some fun ones that I really like. Um, so I'll be excited to see what people have to say about that. Um, but it has been a fun visit here in Sports and Rec, um, and I think it's time for our next stop. So I'm gonna walk on out of Sports and Rec and I'm gonna head outside, walk across the dining hall green, walk past arts and crafts, give it a wave on my way, um, walk past the infirmary and walk past the big rock and walk past the admissions building and past that beautiful garden that always looks so amazing in the spring and summer that Sue works so hard on. I love that garden so much, but I'm gonna walk on by that and um, I'm heading to the pool for our next stop. Um, are there some fans of swimming out there? I bet a few, few fans. Um, so um, my next question is about swimming and um, let a famous swimmer um, that some of you may have heard of. Um, so the question is, what Olympic swimmer has received the most gold medals of any Olympian in history? Hmm. Hmm. What Olympic swimmer has received the most gold medals of any Olympian in history? So amazing. It, it's like amazing to me to even win one gold medal, 
but this person has won so many gold medals. I think it might be like 20 gold medals. Amazing. Um, and if you need a hint, this person is um, a swimmer from the United States. So let's see if we got some answers coming in. I see lots of good answers out there. Nice job. All right, it looks like we have some answers. Uh, yep, it is Michael Phelps. Good job, everyone. Yes, Michael Phelps. Um, he has won so many gold medals uh, and totally amazing. High five for him if I ever got to meet him. <laughs> Um, and I would also like to know where do you like to swim the most? Um, for me, it's definitely a pool and I totally love the camp pool um, with it's always so warm, nice and big with the French fryer over there um, so that I can stay warm when I get out of the pool. Um, but I, I like swimming in pools the most, although there is something special about um, about the ocean too for me i like it. i like it there but i also like kind of walking around at the ocean and looking for shells <laughs> um great good answers everyone good answers um okay so our uh visit to the pool is all set now we're going to head on to our next place we're going to turn back around and head back up towards downtown. So we're going to walk by the garden again. We're going to walk by the big rock again. And we're going to go into the wood shop. So in the wood shop, when you look around, there's all these wonderful projects on the walls. It always smells good in there because um, everyone's doing so much with uh, woodworking. And um, of course, wood comes from trees. And so my next question is about trees. Um, so the next question, what is the tallest type of tree in the world? What is the tallest type of tree in the world? Hmm, any guesses on this one? Um, if you need a hint, you can find it in the United States, but not around camp. <laughs> Let's see if anyone knows this one. Um, hmm, so, so tall. Anyone knows the tallest type of tree in the world? Yes, it is, I think, in California and Oregon and Washington State. Ooh, Animal Kingdom is a good guess. Um, it's not the one in Animal Kingdom, although that is a very big degree. <laughs> um, yeah, somebody got it. Oh, camp. Yes, the, uh, the holiday party tree. That is a really big tree, too. Um, yeah, it looks like somebody got it. It's the redwood, um, the coastal redwood to be, um, uh, to be specific. And the tallest coastal redwood is 380 feet tall. Good job, Corey. You got it too. <laughs> um, it's 380 feet tall and um, it actually has a name. It's called Hyperion. Um, and if you're wondering how tall is 380 feet, um, but it's actually 75 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty. So it's really, really, really tall. Amazing. Um, so I don't think it quite fit in the dining hall. <laughs> um, but what about you guys? Have you uh, made some different projects in the wood shop before? Um, one time I made a box, which was really fun. Um, but I always like watching um, people working so hard on the wood burning in there um, on, on their plaques and on their wooden shapes. Um, I love how creative everyone gets when they do wood burning. Um, so that's always pretty cool. Um, great. So I think we'll head to our next stop. Uh, we're going to head on out of wood shop um, and we're going to go past arts and crafts across the dining hall green, wave to sports and rec on our side, and we're going to go into the theater.
So I love the theater. The theater is such an amazing building at camp. Um, but for my question, we're not even going to need to go too far into the theater. It's actually right there in the entrance because one of the first things you see when you walk in is um, you see all those movie posters of um, Paul Newman, our founder, um, some of the movies that he's been in. You can see them all right up there. Um, as you walk in and they look so good in there. Um, so my next question has to do with um, one of the movies that Paul Newman starred in. Um, so I want to know if anyone knows, what is the name of the famous movie that Paul Newman starred in that inspired the name for the Hole in the Wall Gang Camp? And we do talk about it at camp every now and again. Um, so let's see, I'll, I'm going to read that one one more time to you all. Um, what is the name of the famous movie that Paul Newman starred in that inspired the name for the Hole in the Wall Gang Camp? Hmm, who knows? I'm seeing some people writing about the things they've made in the wood shop, and it looks like maybe someone made a chair one time. That sounds so cool. And a cat house. I um, but what about the movie? I wonder if anyone can get the movie right. We have a guess for Cars in Cars 3. That's a really good guess because Paul Newman had, um, Paul Newman actually voiced one of the characters in Cars, um, the character Doc Hudson. So that is super cool that we get to hear Paul Newman every time we watch that movie, which is amazing. Um, hi to the CEOs. Hello. Um, and yes, I see a couple of answers coming in. Yep. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. You guys got it right. Nice job. Um, so that's such a good move. And I wonder if maybe in this quiet time at home, um, we might get a chance to watch Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid with, with our families. Um, I know my family just watched that the uh, last few days. Um, but what are some of your other favorite movies to watch at home? Um, and you can write those in the comments. Uh, oh, Cool Hand Luke. That's a good movie. That's a good one of Paul Newman's. So many good ones he has. <laughs> Um, but some of my favorite ones are, I really like Frozen 2, and it was so cool hearing um, Elena and Millie do that sing-along a little bit earlier last week that had that song, um, uh, Some Things Never Change. Love that song so much, but Frozen 2 is a great movie, and I just got to watch Onward yesterday on Disney+, Plus, and it was so good, so that was really fun, too. Um, all right, so I think we'll go to our last spot for the day. Um, we're going to head on out of the theater and go in a new direction. Um, so we're going to walk past Putt-Putt, hi Putt-Putt, and um, tennis courts, and there's the archery field out there. And I see the tree house as I walk. And I'm going to head on down the path a little bit further because um, I want to get to boating and fishing. Um, but I think I'm going to take the shortcut today. So I'm going to take the shortcut and maybe see if I can spot a couple animals hiding in the woods on the um, walk. Um, and then I'm going to get there and I finally see the boathouse and I see Pearson's Pond. So beautiful out here. I love it. I'm still thinking about movies a little bit because that was a lot of fun at the theater. And it looks like some are still thinking about movies too. Um, the Wizard of Oz, oh, Greatest Showman, such a good one. Um, Snow White, oh, so many good movies, yes. Um, but so I'm thinking about fish, uh, boating and fishing. I'm thinking about fish. I'm still thinking about movies. So I think my question has to do with both of those things. Um, so here we go. In Finding Nemo, what is the name of the helpful blue fish that works with Marlin to find his son? Hmm. In Finding Nemo, what is the name of the helpful blue fish that works with Marlin to find his son? If anyone out there has seen Finding Nemo, can you give me some thumbs up? <laughs> Ooh, 
I don't see Weepy yet. I'm looking for him. I wonder if some of you can see in your imaginations, if you can see Weepy. Nice. Seeing some answers coming in. Let's see. Who knows? Um, a cool fact, actually, that I know about Finding Nemo that I thought you all might like. Um, did you know that Finding Nemo was the first Pixar movie that took place outside of the United States? Um, and it took place in Australia. So that was kind of a cool thing that I learned. Um, oh, yeah. A couple people have the right name, and it looks like Dory. You knew it. It was Dory. Of course, who could forget Dory? Uh, and she even got her own movie, too. <laughs> Maybe have some people seen um, Finding Dory. If you have, give me some thumbs up for that. That was a fun movie. Um, and also, if you remember the address that Dory kept repeating uh, so many times in Finding Nemo, I think it was the, uh, the office of the dentist's office address. Uh, if you remember that, write that in the comments too, and we'll give you a like for that. <laughs> um, oh, it's, it's a great day to be at Boating and Fishing and walk out on the dock. Uh, and it makes me think of the times that I've caught some fish at camp. Have you all caught some fish at camp? Uh, if you have, how many fish have you caught? And I sometimes I try to remember how big the fish was that I caught. And sometimes it's like, I think it was this big, then it could have been this big, or also maybe this big, or this big. Um, it's hard to remember. Every time I try to remember it, it gets bigger and bigger. I wonder if that happens for any of you. Um, yeah. P. Sherman, 42, Wally B. Way, Sydney, Elise, you, you got it right. Amazing. That was exactly right. P. Sherman, Wally B. Way, Sydney, a few people know. You guys have great memories from Disney trivia. Oh, so good, so good. Um, and I think we all, maybe all of us know, um, the legendary camp fish in Pearson Pond. So we're going to wait to him. If you remember his name, write that on into the comments too. And I uh, will head on back up to camp. Um, and I think this is the end of our walk for today, but I want to thank you all so much for joining in and answering some questions with me today. Um, and if you're looking for some more fun, um, tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, um, my co-specialist Bailey is going to be doing a fun activity with us all called Flip That Rock. And um, he'll be helping us explore nature together and we get to guess what's underneath the rocks that Bailey flips over. and. It's gonna be a surprise to everyone, and I cannot wait, because that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and the best part is, we all get to just stay inside and watch, so it's gonna be great. Um, but until then, I just wanted to say um, bye from all of us. We're thinking of you, we miss you, and we love you, and we can't wait till uh, we can see you all again soon. Um, so have a wonderful day, bye.